The wait is finally over. It's time for MCC's fourth season. Welcome to the official update video for MCC season four kickoff. That's right, after a long break, we're back and as excited as ever for MCC to return to your screens again. We have got so much to run you through, so I want you to stop a sec, walk over to that clock you have on your wall and smash it. This should theoretically simulate a pause in time and space, providing you the uninterrupted time you need to be able to watch this video without distraction. Okay, let's get started. Starting with the hub. Looks like the GDL ran out of fuel and finally had to land the MCC dome. The hub is now located in a beautiful luscious jungle, which looks kind of familiar. Ah, uh, no. Anyway, you'll notice that the main beach area is locked off in a gated area. This is because teams will now be able to log onto the server much earlier than the event start and get busy making their very own custom stage. The hub now has 10 build plots where contestants can get creative and build something to represent their team. These stages will appear in their team introductions during the opening ceremony, and if the team wins, it'll appear in the background of the Walk of Fame and immortalized within their Hall of Fame display as well. To help paint the perfect picture, teams can actually edit the spawns and positions of themselves within the stage. The hub now has a small sumo arena along with a practice area for dodgeball that teams can utilize before the event. As well as this, the official intro to the event will now take place in front of the gates before opening up and letting people into the MCC beach. The Hall of Fame will also be accessible beforehand, featuring a new building design. Season 4 kicks off with our brand new minigame hitting the Decision Dome, Railroad Rush, a frantic puzzling game where teams work together to build the longest railroad. I'm going to explain the rules for Railroad Rush in a separate video, so you can either watch that now or save it till after the video, but there's a ton more to get through here, so let's crack on. We'll run through the games that have received some updates and then move on to some pretty cool general surprises. Oh my god, Scott. What? May the 4th, lol. That's Star Wars Day. Our first event back is on Star Wars Day. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if all the swords in the games were replaced with light, light swords? That would actually be hilarious. Anyway. TGTTOS gets a new map, an obviously very relaxing golf course where the players are the golf ball, and we'll be seeing the return of an old favourite, Basin. Hope you like tridents! Battlebox receives additional bonus items per kit, meaning kits get quite a bit more interesting. This also debuts with a brand new map, Spaceship, which features a ton of verticality to play with, especially as some of the kits contain sparks of levitation. Huh. That drop in the middle kind of looks like the one Darth Maul falls down in Phantom Menace. Hole of the Wall gets two new wall types. Returning walls will turn back in themselves after they've crossed the entire platform, and fake out walls trick you by coming at you at a very fast speed, but slowing down at the last second. I didn't know the walls could be so pesky. Rocket's Bleef Rush recently released on MCC Island along with its very own Season 4, and a bunch of other updates since Season 3 ended. So go check that out if you haven't already. Well, RSR featured a new Elytra durability mechanic and it turns out players and contestants loved it, so it's getting brought to the event too. This simply means that players will need to land every so often to top up the durability of their Elytra. Players can also damage each other's durability by hitting each other with rockets. And exclusively to the events version, the damage starts at about 50% at the beginning of each round and progressively ramps up throughout. Islands in Rocket's Bleef Rush will now also show their outline before they spawn in. Easier landing for everybody. Without being able to show any, you can expect 10 new puzzle rooms added into Sands of Time's generator. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Sky Battle's Metro map has received an update to improve traversal and combat in the center of the map. It has additional islands on the journey to the middle, along with a gigantic new mid-ring offering more stable ground. And do you know what goes really well with Jedis? Pirates! Bingo about Fast gets a little piratey in this ocean-themed map. I hope you like boat-related challenges. Alright, so MCC has always been more about the players and the teams taking part than anything else. So we've constantly been looking for ways to celebrate them more, and we've got some cool things you'll be seeing added with this next event. The first feature is the kudos system. From now on, after every game, each player may receive a kudos message from MCC telling them if they managed to do well in a particular statistic of theirs, including any records they managed to break since their last performance. As well as this, the players who managed to break the most impressive stat record will be announced globally to the entire server, letting players celebrate each other's achievements a bit more. Super excited to see where this one goes because some of the stats might just be a little silly too. Now let's talk about improving your experience. Yes, you, the viewer. 
Remember those long and wordy rule breakdowns before each game? Well, they're being replaced by rather pretty tutorial screens aimed towards explaining all the information that anyone needs to be able to understand the game ahead in the least amount of jargon possible. This should mainly help new players and viewers understand what's about to go down. And for anyone looking for more details on the rules, there's always the MCC website and the wikis. All right, so this is by far the coolest new feature, introducing MCC.Live predictions. MCC.Live will now feature a cool mini game for viewers to play along with during the show. Before the event starts and before every game, predictions will ask you to predict which team you think will come out on top. Once the game has finished, MCC.Live will report in chat how much of the user base managed to predict it correctly. This should help bring the real underdogs to light. When the event finishes, predictions will tally up your prediction score and give you a nicely laid out score chart at the end, showing how well you did. And if you want to compare your scores against others, you'll find a channel in MCC's Discord for it. Of course, with the new season comes a new coin. The Season 3 coin is no longer obtainable and now contestants will be fighting out to win the official Season 4 winner's coin. With the new coin also comes the release of the pre-orders for the official Season 4 supporter coin. These will only be available in small batch orders, so if you want one, make sure you get your pre-order in on time, as we make them based on order capacity. Simply head on over to mcc.store and you'll find the listing and all you need to know there. Also, we're doing a big clear out sale on some of our legacy merch. So if you're picking up the coin, you've got the option to pick up some of those pieces alongside too. Any purchases go directly to supporting MTC and thank you to everyone who supported us in season three. We hope you like your coin. And in case you missed it, we've already announced another MCC happening June 30th. That'll be Twitch Rivals MC Championship Live happening in the real world at TwitchCon EU. So if you want more info on that, do check the description and maybe we'll see you there. All right, that's all for now. Welcome back to Season 4 and we'll be seeing you on Saturday, May the 4th at 8pm BST for MCC Season 4 kickoff. Awesome. Now all that's left to do is to figure out how to fix that clock you smashed earlier so you can escape that time rift you're in and return to reality. Otherwise, I guess tomorrow might never come. <laughs>